All right, CrossFitters, it is time for the nutrition breakdown. I'm going to try to keep this super simple. Um, it's a it's a very simple math problem, and when you can master this, you are now in control of your own destiny. So I do this manually for all of you guys. There's little nuances um, depending on the individual, the amount of training history they've had, the amount of actual muscle mass they have versus fat compared to body weight. So I put a breakdown in the email Ari is sending out. That's a starting point. You're not going to break yourself in this first two weeks to a month. Yeah, it might be a little under or it might be a little over. I went a little bit on the small side. So I always do that. I learned that when we first start our six week challenges, everybody's like, oh, this is like no food. But then when people start eating whole foods, it ends up being enough food and it's filling and it has a little bit of wiggle room that if you screw up or if you indulge, you're still under for total calories and you're still losing fat and it's enough food to feel full and you can build muscle and you're not miserable. Okay. So that's why if you feel like it's a little under, suck it up, especially if you've been eating like shit during the holidays, you're just not used to it. You're going to have like a sugar detox phase. You might feel weak. You might feel miserable. If you have a lot of fat to lose, you might lose a little bit of muscle in the process and that's okay too. I talk a lot about building up this bank and the more muscle you have, the more like deposits you put in the bank. So we don't want to lose muscle. But if you have a lot of fat to shed through, you got to keep your calories low and you've got to go with the occasional surplus to keep your hormones in line. But you've got a, a long journey ahead. So you might lose some of that muscle that you've been carrying around on the road. And it's okay. You will be able to build it back up. We want our metabolic rate to be as high as possible. We want sort of to be able to eat for, um, find out what that maintenance number is. And if you've been carrying around even like excess muscle because you're really heavy and your body just has a lot of muscle to carry around the extra weight all day, it's not a horrible thing to lose a little bit of muscle on the way to getting lean. Okay, having a lot of muscle is expensive. It takes a lot of food and it's just a pain in the ass to maintain it. So it's not the worst thing in the world. All right, so let's get back to the point at hand. We're gonna do our breakdown. I'm gonna keep it super simple. We're gonna use really basic round numbers so it's easy. Um, we're gonna use an individual that weighs um, 200 pounds and they are within the under you know 20 percent body fat already they're trying to shred just the last little bit of body fat they're not someone that's weighing 250 and they have a frame that can support a 200 pounds so that's kind of what i look at when i look at the chart if you weigh like 250 260 or if you're a female and you weigh like 190 200 and you think your ideal body weight is about 160 or or 175 the ideal body weight once the fat is shredded off is what we're going to use for our protein number. Okay, because I'm assuming you're going to be hitting weights hard three to four days a week at a minimum, I'm going to put your grams of protein at one pound, one gram per pound of body weight of what your ideal body weight is. If you're 260 and you want to be 200, you don't get to eat 260 grams of protein, or I should say you don't have to, thankfully. Who the hell wants to eat that much freaking ground turkey? But anyways, you get it to be what your body weight is going to be as you continue on this journey, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. When I talk about that number, the my the in-body scan should have a little number up in the upper right-hand corner that says approximately how much body fat you have to shed to get to that ideal weight. That makes it really easy. If you know, if you've been at that certain ideal body weight where you know you feel really good and confident in, um, unless it was a long ass time ago, like you were in high school or something, you didn't have any muscle mass. A lot of times if you've been doing CrossFit, as your muscle mass increases, you may think, hey, I want to be 145 and it should really be 165, right? Because if I pack on 10, 15 pounds of muscle, it's going to make me leaner. So that's my general rule of thumb for the body weight for the protein. So let's go down to the middle right-hand column of our sheet and get our basal metabolic rate. It says it right on there. If you did this in-body scan and it texted you the results, it gives you kind of a printout. It might give you your basal in kilojoules. I don't really know what to do with that number. I, I don't know how to convert it. If you go to the actual printout of the sheet, it will have the basal metabolic rate in calories on the middle column on the far right. It'll be right there. Take that number. The simplest way I can tell you to do it is if you're really active, meaning you're in the gym five or more times a week 
add 300 to 350 cals. If you are in the gym three to four times a week and you leave a fairly sedimentary lifestyle, meaning you're e-learning, you're sitting in your desk, you're just a normal person, which would be all of us, you're just gonna add 250 to it. Okay, so that two, 200 to 250 versus a 300 to 350 is gonna be, are you working out with weights those additional two or more days? Okay, so hopefully that's clear. That's in the, in the email. Once you have that base number, that is a very low end of a maintenance. If you probably hit that number, you could probably shed a little bit of fat and maintain your muscle. And that's gonna be kind of like, hey, I'm happy where I'm at. I just wanna tighten up. If you want to aggressively lose some fat, then we're going to cut that number by 500 calories a day. Okay. That's about the most we want to lose fat where we're trying to lose like maybe a pound of fat a week. So in a month, we might lose four pounds of fat, something like that. It's still a healthy zone, but it's going to be a little bit more aggressive on the fat loss. If you are one of those hyperactive people, like I had said, then don't take away quite as much. Just take away. 400 calories, okay? Because I don't want you to take away too many of your calories for recovery if you're doing all this training. You're gonna be ravenously hungry. So 500 or 400, subtracted. My base number, remember using round numbers, is my 200 pound man. He's 200 grams of protein. His kill of cows was 2,000. We're just gonna use 2,000. So I'm dropping it down. He wants to shred up to... 1600. So I took away, I want to lose this fat. I'm going to be super tight and lean. I'm in 200 grams of protein and I'm eating 1600 calories. That takes us into the next part of our equation. So now we have our 1600 total calories to consume on a daily basis. We have our 200 grams of protein we're consuming. Every gram of protein is equal to four calories. So I can do a very simple math problem and know that 800 calories of my 1600 are coming from protein. I probably undershot the number, but just for simplicity's sake, that's 50% calories from protein. That's a little bit high, but if you are um, trying to lose fat and we're keeping the cows low, it might be upwards of 40 to 50% for protein for this first phase. That's that's not unheard of. So the the most, okay, anyways, I'm, I'm rambling, but let's get that number dialed in. We got our 1600, we got our 200 grams of protein. We got 800 calories of our 1,600, half of that gone every single day in the amount of protein that we eat, okay? 200 grams, you can divide that up however you want. That's why I like that formula. If you map it out, that's three meals at 50 grams a piece. That's 150. That's a shake after my workout with 25. And then that's another shake or snack with 25. That gets me to my 200 pretty normally, eating pretty normally. Now, what does 50 grams look like? We'll talk about that in another video, but 50 grams of protein is maybe like seven, eight ounces of chicken or something like that. So you gotta get your food scale out. You gotta figure out what your 50 gram portion looks like if you're this person. And then you gotta eat that three times and then you have to have the two snacks. Those are non-negotiable. That's how I hit my 200. It's gotta be on the button. That's for part of the points. Okay, the rest of the calories are gonna come from carbs and fats. They're pretty much interchangeable and that's why I'm not giving a specific. As we first launched the gym, I was big into reducing inflammation, being healthy. I was big on a high fat diet. When you eat high fat and you eat a lot of vegetables, you don't really need a ton of carbs because you're using your fat as fuel. I still like to eat like that. But as we took on our challenge protocols, it was a lower fat, kind of moderate carbohydrate, making sure you had enough carbs to recover and rebuild that muscle tissue um, and have energy in the gym, I should say. And the protein was high to rebuild the muscle tissue. And the fat was really low. It was like 45, 50 grams. They both work because this is a numbers game. Remember, it's your budget. So this is where I'm giving you the tools and the flexibility to take control of how you like to eat and you're owning your shit. You're owning it. You're making it look like what you wanna look like, that what you're gonna stick with so you don't make excuses. If I like to eat a higher fat, if I wanna throw some bacon in there, for breakfast or something like that. If I wanna eat like some sausage, if there's some more of a red meat, that's gonna blow your fats up. And you might have to eat more green vegetables and less carbs, less fruit, less starches because your fats are higher. 
Fats are worth nine cals per gram. So if I were to eat with my remaining 800 calories, if I was to eat no carb, ketogenic diet or something like that, that would give me whatever 800 divided by nine is. It's something around 90 grams of fat, right? Because nine times nine is 81. So let's just say 90 grams of fat. That's not an unheard of amount, but then I would get zero carbohydrate. That's not possible. Even if you're eating vegetables, you eat the occasional fruit snack or something, you're going to use some carbohydrate. I don't promote that. I don't think it's healthy. Maybe in an extenuating circumstances for health purposes, you could do that, but that's not the way we're going to live a long-term healthy lifestyle. So we don't want to go 100% fat, zero carb. On the flip side, if I took that 800 calories and I did all carbs, carbs are worth four cows per gram. That would give me what, 800 divided by four, 200 grams of carbs, 200 grams of carbs for a normal adult person. That's actually not an unheard of amount. And again, this person is a little bit low on the calories and they have the protein is kind of high, right? Because I'm just kind of made this example up. But if I have 200 grams of carbs and I have zero fat, that's not realistic either. So we got to find that middle ground and that's where you guys can do your own calculations. So take my 800. I'm just going to use for a rule of thumb. I want to do about 150 grams of carbs, 150 grams of carbs for this person. That gives me 600 of my calories and then 200 remain. And I will divide 200 by nine. It's somewhere around like, it's like 30 grams of fat, not even because three times nine is 27. So it's maybe like 20, five grams of fat, something like that. 24, 29, 18. I don't know. I'm not doing math. I don't have my calculator in front of me because it's on the phone. So, so that is kind of your playground. And this is why I say you're making these deposits. Every strength training workout you do and every muscle pound you build on your body, that BMR goes up and you're able to eat more fat, more carbs. So if you don't like how this budget looks, I don't give a shit. Put some investments into your bank account and build that thing up. You've got to be disciplined because the people that have more muscle get to eat more food, period, period, okay? There's no ifs, ands, or buts around it. We joke about it all the time when we're onboarding new people. CrossFit gives you permission to eat like an asshole. You take somebody that's lifted weights or done CrossFit for 10 years they're getting away with having beers and pizza and they can still see their abs. They can still see veins popping out because they've done that work. If you haven't done that work and you have no muscle and you kind of have to eat like this for a little bit of time until you can start to build up. Okay. So that's just is what it is. Um, what was I going to say? The last part. Um, yeah, that's all I got for that calculation piece. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you have any questions, hit up your team leader. It might look different for you, um, but that's what we're going to use for this first phase. And uh, oh, I know what I was going to say. The last part is going to be whole single ingredient foods are very nutrient dense and calorie poor, meaning you get way more bang for your buck. If I were to eat a potato a sweet potato, um, some brown rice, that type of stuff is going to fill me up. If I eat uh, fibrous vegetables, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, green beans, those things are going to fill me up. So if you're trying to get by and you've only got those 1600 calories and you're like, Craig, I can't live off of this. I had, you know, my Jimmy Dean breakfast sausage. I had my Starbucks, um, sausage and egg McMuffin. And I'm already, I've already used up 800 calories. I only have 800 left. That was half my carbs and all my fat. I got to eat 142 grams of protein by themselves. Exactly. That's why we did the homework. I want you to see how much those processed foods take out of your budget. You can do it when you've built up the big budget, or you might be so unwilling to give up that delicious breakfast sandwich that then you're willing to eat three cans of tuna and a bunch of green leafy vegetables the rest of the day. And that works for you. Great. Find out what works for you and own it. If you can't go without something, take it out of the budget and see what's left and then do the required work. 
It sucks, but it's really that simple. And then after a few days of that, you might be like, F this. I'm going to try this black coffee with this stevia because I can't afford. I want to use that those calories for something else. Cool? So that's what I got on the calculation part. Get your calculator out. Get your in-body sheet out. Start playing with the numbers. Use those numbers with your perfect day and see how it fits with what you had did on your homework assignment. Now you've got something to compare it to. Are those foods worth it? All right, I love you guys, man. Tomorrow we starting, big day, I'm excited. I'll see you guys in the gym.